Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is day 638, uh, and that's also known as Saturday, September 30th, 2023 is when this is originally posted. But anyway, day 638 of our three-year journey through the Word of God brings us to Nehemiah chapter 4. We saw such great encouraging news yesterday in the rebuilding of the wall, and we saw really the church functioning the way that it should. It's one of the few places where you get a model of obedience and organization and hard work uh, in, in among the Old Testament people of God. There are a few of them, and that was one of them yesterday. And today, of course, opposition to the work. It's a reminder to us today that God's work never goes forward unopposed. If you're really serving the Lord and really doing the work that he's called you to do and you're doing it well, Satan will oppose the work. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are the sovereign Lord, that we are your people, that you cannot be stopped, that your purposes always prevail. But we know that there is a real enemy and we know that there is real opposition to your work in the world. So we pray that you would give us grace. Help us to understand Nehemiah chapter 4. Help us to respond to it with faith and obedience. Help us to hold more closely to Christ as we follow him in this world that opposes him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Nehemiah chapter 4. Now when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. And he said, in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they remove, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him, and he said, Yes, what are they building? If a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt and let not their sin be blotted out from your sight. For they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So we built the wall. And all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Senvalet and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as protection against them day and night. In Judah, it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemies said, They will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. At that time, the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, You must return to us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall in open places, I stationed the people by their clans, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction and half held the spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand 
and held his weapon with the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped on his side while he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, The work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, Let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem, that they may be a guard for us by night, and may labor by day. So neither I, nor my brothers, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon at his right hand. Hmm. What a suspenseful chapter. Like reads like something out of a movie, conspiracy theory, and you know, well, not a theory, but an actual conspiracy. There are actual conspiracies, and here's this <clears throat> conspiracy among the enemies of God's people, where they're going to join together and they're going to attack the work that God is doing, and it is, it's powerful, it is frightening. This is quite a coalition. I mean. If you see it, you, we don't really know yet exactly about Sambalat and Tobiah much, but they're wealthy and they're well-connected, and they're not people to be taken lightly. These are not just two random guys, you know, who hang out on the street corner. They are wealthy and well-connected, and verse 7 really gives us a, a sense of the scope of this. It's Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites. So you've got these two guys who rally these three different groups of people, Arabs who are in the area, uh, Geshem is an Arab, uh, Tobiah is an Ammonite, uh, the Ashdodites, uh, those are people over in Ashdod along, along the coast. And so they're, they're all conspiring together. They think they're going to have a sneak attack. They think that they're going to come up in their midst and they're going to catch everybody by surprise and put an end to the labor. Why were they so scared? They were scared because God's people united together and committed in unity to God's work are a force to be reckoned with. Verse 6 tells us, So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. They joined together, they built, the people had a mind to work, and they made great progress. They got the wall to half of its height all around the city. Now, it's still not a full wall, and they're going to run into problems. They can't, they can't keep building much higher because a lot of the wall that was broken down by the Babylonians was, was burned, shattered, and so you can't really use that rubble. So they're building with the best of what they can find. But they are building with the best of what they can find. And what I love is how they respond to this conspiracy against them. You think of what might be two very natural responses against such a conspiracy against the work of God. One is to be scared, frightened into submission, to give up, to walk away, to say it's not worth it. We're never going to get this rebuilt. There's three people groups, probably each one of which outnumbers us, and they would surround us, and they would kill us. It's just not worth it. It's not going to get done. You know, what good is it going to do if we all die? All the excuses that can be made up for why it just won't work. That kind of response happens often when God's work is going on by God's people. People will say, it can't happen. What's the point? We don't have the resources. There's no way to make this you know, project complete. What are we even doing here? What, you know, there's so much opposition. So that is a natural human response, but it's a wrong response. On the other side, there are always some people among God's people who have a super spiritual response. Far from being cynical and dejected and from walking away from the work because they're convinced it can't be done, they take this super spiritual approach that says, Let's just pray and trust the Lord and just keep building and ignore these people. That's not the approach that's taken by Nehemiah and the people rebuilding Jerusalem either. 
an overly spiritual approach. And by that, I don't mean that it's wrong to depend on God. It's wrong to pray. It's wrong to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. It's none of that. But you can use this super, super spiritual uh, language and the super spiritual thinking in a way that's unbiblical because God is the God of means. He provides means. And so they take action. They do pray. I love verse 9. We prayed to our God and set a guard as our protection against them day and night. They did pray. They did trust the Lord. Nehemiah looks at the people and the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people in verse 14. And he says, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. So they do pray and they do preach, right? They pray to God together and they proclaim, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. But they also set a guard. They also have a practical system of trumpets that are spread out. And if we're attacked in any place, we will blow the trumpet. You will come among us. Uh, you will help us. And then they even, you know, were so diligent to say, everybody who's working on the wall. See, some people were not Jerusalem residents. They would go back to their home in the surrounding area. They said, everybody's working on the wall. We're all going to sleep inside Jerusalem. And we're all going to sleep with our weapons and keep your clothes on, keep your sandals on your feet. We're just going to lay down and rest for as much as we can until we can get up and work hard the next day. So from first light to last light, there's this working and this guarding going on. Your weapons for war in one hand and construction material in the other hand, people with bow and arrows stationed, people with trumpets stationed. The work does not stop. You labor with the work in one hand and the weapon in the other hand, and you don't stop working. And then at night, you have a guard and you keep everybody together. So this, this is just a call to us that says biblical wisdom. I think this is the main takeaway point from this passage for us. Biblical wisdom means we trust God, we proclaim God, and we make wise and diligent use of the means that God gives us to do the work of God. So we work and we are wise and we plan and we save and we invest and we contribute and we pray and we praise God and we trust him for the provision. That's the way the work of God goes forward. Neither with a cynical despair nor with a super spiritual over spiritualizing of everything, but with a rather a firm reliance upon God and a diligent use of the means of wisdom that he gives to us. May God use that to help us to be more faithful in the work of the Lord in every aspect of it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for giving us life in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for calling us to be a part of your church. Thank you for giving your church good work to do. Help us to be diligent and faithful in the work that you give us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that is Nehemiah chapter 4. Tomorrow, actually, we're going to go back to the Psalms. Go back to the Psalms. Easy for you to say. Psalm 94 is on tap for tomorrow. Hope you can join me for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.